Hi TNT friends and welcome to Virtual Awana again. We're back after spring break. I hope y'all had a great spring break. And so we are gonna work on our double section today. And um, so hopefully you're ready to go with all those pre-study questions answered from your white boxes. So I thought, what? how about first we'll do our um, Awana Go together. We'll do both 4.4 and 4.5 Awana Go. And there's actually some more questions for you in these ones. Did you notice that? So we're gonna be talking about those. And then I'll do our big lesson talk on both lessons together. And then at the end of the video, I'll go back and I'll go through the white boxes with you in case you had any questions on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's how we'll do this video. Sound good? All right, and just so you know, things are working ahead towards the end of the year. If you can believe that, we're getting so close, just like our books are coming to an end. So is our Awana year. So be looking out, um, tell your parents to look out for emails about what's coming up because we'll be doing um, an end of the year awards night. Um, and then also there is Bible quizzing coming up the end of April. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, it will be a little bit different because um, typically we'll do a huddle session, but because of being careful about social distancing and all of that, we won't do a huddle. We're just gonna do all multiple choice questions. We'll still combine our points like as teams, um, so that we can still have that team dynamic, but it will be multiple choice questions about um, our book work and what we've done in our TNT lesson. So if you've done it before, you'll know like it's about some word definitions. It's about um, the memory verses and what they taught us about God and his word. Um, there might be some study questions that you answered. It will be all things that you've seen before in your book, and we'll do some practice sessions on that too. So if you haven't already registered, there's a link that has gone out in the email, so you can tell your parents, look for the link, or call Miss Denise or Pastor Jamie, and uh, we can get you signed up for Awana quizzing. And that is April 24th. It's the last Saturday in April, I believe. So, well, not the last Saturday, second to last Saturday. <laughs> Sorry about that. So that's coming up. And then we'll have our Awana Awards the first Wednesday in May. So, oh my goodness, we're getting so close. And it's Holy Week. Did you realize that? It's the week before Palm Sunday and Easter. So how perfect for us to be talking about forgiveness and transformation this week, because that is the big, huge piece of Jesus coming and uh, dying on the cross for us, right? It's all about this forgiveness. Uh, so let's talk about that, but let's first do our wanna go. I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm excited about this. All right, so wanna go. Our first one is on page 215, and it says, leaders, we've learned about some other people and how God is at work in their lives. What about you? Think of two leaders you know personally and write the names of the leaders on the lines. So you can think of that. I mean, we're kind of doing this together, so you can use me if you want. Um, think of another leader maybe that you've had in the past from Moana or another leader uh, that has been helping you work through your book, maybe our verse listeners. You can uh, write those names down. And then we're going to be praying for church, churches and leaders like your leaders that God would bless them and encourage them as they care for kids, okay? And then... Let's go ahead. Did you get two names written down there? Okay, two names would be awesome. And it's okay if one of them's your mom. I know some of you have your moms very much involved <laughs> in your Awana experience, and that's awesome. Okay, and then we're skipping over to page 223, and that's our Awana Go in 4.5. And it says, we've learned about some other people and how God is at work in their lives. What about you? Look at the list of these common challenges kids might encounter when wanting to make a difference for God. Which one is most true for you? Check the box next to it. Okay, let's read them and then maybe think, like maybe this is the challenge I feel. The first one says, I feel challenged to read the Bible more and remember how it applies to my life. Okay. Two, I feel challenged to find a way that I can show God's love by helping other people in my life. Three, I feel challenged to pray and remember that God is with me even when I feel scared. All right, and number four, I feel challenged to trust God even when I have really hard things happen. Yeah, and that challenge word, it's like... Um, 
what maybe feels like it really matters to you. We've done a lot of studying in God's word this year, haven't we? And digging in and, and saying, what did God do in the past for the big picture of him bringing us all to heaven to be with him? What has he done and how does that change my life each day, right? These have been some pretty grown up conversations that we've been having, talking about how does my faith apply what is faith and how do I get, grow closer to God, right? So maybe as we've been talking about that, there's something that you're like, man, you know, I really, I really think I want to be studying God's word more, right? Maybe that's something that challenge word is saying that's something that I feel like I want to do more of. Yeah. Or um, the second one, finding ways that we can show God's love by helping other people. Maybe this year has been a year you're like, man, I want to do more of that. Okay. So that's that challenge word. I feel like this is something I want to do more of. The third one, um, praying more and remembering that God is with us even when we feel scared. And that's a, that's a huge, this has been a weird year, hasn't it? Um, so maybe this is a place where God's saying, you're just feeling stirred that I just need to pray more and, and trust God because I've been feeling afraid a lot. Um, and that's something that you're feeling challenged. That's that challenge word to do. And then the last one, um, trusting God even when we have hard things happen. Um, Maybe as we've been got, going through God's word together, you, I know um, one of you lost a grandparent this year. Um, there's just been some really hard things, right? And um, some of you have had to do changes in school. Um, so maybe that's as we've been studying God's word, you've been feeling like, no, I, I need to trust God more, even in these hard things, because I know he's there and I know he's working in my life. So hopefully a little bit of explanation helps you with these boxes that uh, you're feeling like, okay, um, I know which one has been weighing on my heart this Awana year as we've been going through. So let's pray. We're going to pray for the churches and leaders, and then let's also pray for the kids, kids like you, who are dealing with the same things that God would give them wisdom and encouragement. Lots to pray for this week, okay? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this virtual Awana time. Thank you for space where we can talk about you. And um, Lord, think about leaders who have taught us and encouraged us and helped us study your word. Uh, Lord, we pray for churches and leaders that you would continue to bless them and encourage them as they teach and encourage others, and especially in Awana as they're teaching and encouraging kids. Um, God, it's hard to be a leader these days. Um, and there's so many different things going on. And so we just pray that you'd bless them and show them ways in all of these new things, like we've been using virtual Awana. Lord, would you help them as they figure out these new pieces um, to, to continue to encourage others for you. And then God, as we we're talking about in these challenges, ways that you've been working in our hearts this year, Lord, I pray for my virtual friends. Um, I pray for kids like them that have been uh, studying your word this year and uh, Lord have been feeling challenged maybe to pray more or to just go out and love others more or uh, to read your Bible uh, more or Lord just to reach out to you and trust when things are hard. Um, God I just I pray for your encouragement for them. Uh, Lord that they would feel courageous in their faith because you are so big God there's your your word says there's nothing that can separate us from your love lord your love is so steady and your plan for us is sure and so i pray lord that as we're studying your word and we feel more and more confident that we feel courageous to trust you and to live boldly for you this year uh, lord it's amazing to think that our year is coming to a close we just ask that you would continue to teach us god by the power of your holy spirit that we would understand your word more and more as we study it together we praise you, God. I pray blessings for my virtual friends and their families uh, today. And um, Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Okay, so let's get into our lesson. And I wanted to refresh your mind a little bit about the timeline. And I didn't get it out necessarily, but I wanted you to think back. Do you remember that we had the whole timeline, right? And then we had Jesus' death right in the middle. And we talked about all of the law that happened before Jesus' death and then the, um, the grace and him saying that it's my forgiveness 
right? That makes you right with God. Not obeying the law, it's my forgiveness, right? And so we were talking about after Christ's death and resurrection, and God gave us the Holy Spirit, right? Jesus um, connected us with God again. If we believe that he died for our sins and we receive his forgiveness, he's reconnected our relationship with God, right? And we talked about that in relationship to humility because we realized that we couldn't do that for ourselves, right? And that God loves the whole world, right? We know from John 3, 16, he loves the whole world. So everybody we interact with, they are also created and loved by God just like we are. So we can't think of ourselves as being better than them if we maybe make better choices as a Christian and follow God's rules better. That's not what makes us better before God. It's what Jesus did, right? And so it makes us look at others from a humble perspective because we're not better than them because we obey more laws than they do, right? We are in the same position of being loved by God and being offered his forgiveness and we've received his forgiveness, right? So I wanted to connect that piece with you, for you tonight because as we talk about forgiveness and then transformation, it all kind of goes together because as we talk about being humble and all being under God's love and being offered his forgiveness, and we hope that each person will someday accept God's forgiveness. The Bible says not everyone will, but we like that's God's heart. He wants everybody to receive his forgiveness, right? We have this idea of relationship, right? That's the big key word about what Jesus did for us is that he restored relationship. So now God is asking us, and we're studying in his word for 4.4, the idea of forgiveness that we need to extend to others for the purpose of relationship, right? So we know that everybody is loved by God and offered his forgiveness. We know that we are all still sinners in that we still struggle with sin. We will still mess up. God knows that we will still mess up. And the power of Christ's death is that it paid for all of our sins from before. It pays for all of our sins of today. And it pays for any sin that we will ever do in the future, right? That's his forgiveness for us. And so God knows that we're all in relationship with each other, right? Every person is going to struggle with sin. And so he's teaching us, it's so you can have a relationship with me because of the forgiveness I extended you. You're going to also need to extend forgiveness to others around you in order to have a healthy relationship. Does that make sense? So God is saying, we are always going to be in relationship with other people who struggle with sin too. We're going to have to offer others forgiveness. And you know what? We're also going to have to ask for forgiveness, right? Because we are going to do things that mess up and hurt others. And so we are going to need to also ask for forgiveness. It's a two-way street. And so let's look at our memory verse for this week and see the encouragement from God's word. And I'm gonna read it right out of your Awana book. I encourage you to look it up in your Bible. Um, I read it out of your Awana book just so the words from my ESV don't confuse you. But our memory verse is Ephesians 4, 32, okay? It says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. You see that big picture? He's saying, just as in Christ, God forgave you to restore this relationship with him. And he wants us to be kind and compassionate, forgiving each other, okay? So that keeps relationships going here on earth. And that's important because God tells us in the New Testament that it is his church, the people working together for the gospel, that gives the world the picture of who he is. He knows that to work together in the church, we're going to need to forgive each other, right? There's going to be times where I'm going to have to ask for forgiveness from somebody else. And there's some time that I'm going to have to offer forgiveness to somebody else because we're just struggling with sin until we get to eternity in heaven and it's all gone, right? And God puts an end to it once and for all. We got to we got to keep practicing this. We got to keep practicing this. And we probably aren't going to do it perfect all the time, are we? But God keeps reminding us, be kind, be compassionate, and forgive others, just as in Christ God forgave you. Pretty awesome, huh? That big picture. So in your start here, it asked you, did you 
can you think of a time where you had to offer forgiveness to somebody else or that you received forgiveness from somebody else that you messed up and you needed to receive forgiveness? I'm sure this has happened because you have relationships in your life right now, right? And so someone has offered you forgiveness or you've offered somebody else forgiveness to still be in that relationship. And maybe think about that. Take a few minutes tonight and think about that and how that is a picture of what God did for you because he wanted to have relationship with you, right? And that's pretty fantastic. So how does this relate then to our idea of being transformed? That's what's coming up in 4.5. So let's switch over to that just so I don't send you an hour long video. We'd be talking forever, wouldn't we? So 4.5, we're talking about transformation and I'm just gonna um, real quick turn pages in my book to get there. So I'm gonna read to you a little paragraph and get this big idea. So we are born enemies of God. That's something to think about. But because God loves us, he offers us grace through Jesus Christ. The Bible says when we trust Jesus as Savior, he makes us a new creation, right? He who is in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come, the Bible says. And the Holy Spirit helps transform us to be more like Jesus. So Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to encourage, to teach, to confront us when something in our life doesn't line up with God's word, right? That the Holy Spirit lives in us. And so God is doing this work of transformation in our hearts, in our hearts. So this is something that God does on the inside of us. So this is hard sometime to, to talk about or to figure out how can, how can we explain what God is doing in our hearts but he is challenging us to be more like Christ. In our sin, in our separation, in our unforgiveness, we couldn't be like Christ, right? Because he is holy and we are stuck in the sinful world. But because Jesus forgave us and he's welcoming us into this relationship and he gives us the Holy Spirit, he's telling us, I'm gonna keep teaching you. I'm gonna keep teaching you the things that are inside that need to be kind of tuned, like tuning the dial on something or tuning the focus on a camera, right? To make it the picture better. He's going to be doing those things in our hearts for as long as we are on the face of this earth. We have a lot of stuff that is gonna be needing to God to show us what is in us that doesn't reflect Christ. And so the forgiveness, right? There can be stuff in our hearts that we hang on to that is not like God. It can be anger. It can be um, um, hatred for somebody else. I'm trying, my mind's blanking. All these things that can be, it can be insecurity that we don't trust, right? All of these things that God is teaching us what this safe relationship with him looks like, right? And so he's going to keep transforming our hearts. The forgiveness piece is a huge part of that, guys, because God forgives and we don't have shame before God because he clears us of all of the, the yuck of our sin, right? And so he makes us new before him. He's transforming us. And maybe he'll be showing us, like, you know I really forgave that, right? Like you are free from being beating yourself up over things. And sometimes that shame is a huge thing to get rid of. Sometimes it can be um, frustration with another relationship. And we just got to keep giving that to God and say, God, keep teaching me. I want to know how to love people better because I know you love people perfectly. And I want to know how to love people better. So be talking with God in response to this. And let's dig into this book work because I think this is going to apply more as we do this book work because in our books it, it says who we were before God forgave us and who we are after. And for us on this earth, we can feel like we're the same person, right? I'm the same. I said a prayer, right? I, I said, God, I need you to forgive me, but I feel like the same person. But God tells us that our relationship with him has changed. And that starts doing a work in us because we feel loved. We feel forgiven. And so there's this work that starts happening on the inside that 
then changes how we relate to others on the outside. We feel more loved and we want to forgive. We want to be in relationship with people because God so loved us. Okay, so let's dig into our bookwork and I'm going to start on page 211. And that was the question about forgiveness. Have you ever been hurt by someone else and had to forgive him or her? Or a time you forgave someone else? Because, um, or they forgave you, excuse me, I'm getting my words mixed up. Okay, so our explore section, it says on page 212, God forgives all our sins, past, present, and future. When we trust that Jesus Christ died for us on the cross and rose again, remembering how we were forgiven can help us forgive others. So we're going to look up and read our memory verse, Ephesians 4.32 in our Bible. We should forgive others like whom? We should forgive others like whom? Right? Remember, be kind and compassionate uh, to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. So like God. That's a big deal. We should forgive others like God. Forgiveness is something we all deal with. We either need to forgive someone or be forgiven by someone every day. It can be hard, but God will give you grace to forgive. So we're going to look up and read Genesis 37, 23 through 28 in our Bible and what happened to Joseph. Do you remember the story of Joseph? I'm sure you do. We've been covering it in, a, um, in kicks. You guys are almost kicks graduates. Can you believe that? Um, 37, 23 through 38. Okay. It says, So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the robe of many colors that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, bearing gum, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let, us, um, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. So then the Midianite traders passed by and they drew Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. They took Joseph to Egypt. All right, so what happened, right? He was betrayed by his brothers, thrown into a pit, stripped of his robe that his dad gave him and sold. They, they hated him so much they wanted to kill him. But one of the brothers said, you know, he is our brother. Maybe we shouldn't kill him. We should sell him instead. How awful. So let's read on. Joseph's brothers hated Joseph so much that they sold him as a slave. Joseph was taken to Egypt. After many years, Joseph ended up getting an important job working for Pharaoh. And that was the king in Egypt. And all that time, God protected him. Years later, there was no food to eat and the brothers traveled to Egypt. They had to buy food from Joseph, but they didn't recognize him. He recognized them, however. Joseph had a long time to think about his choice. He could have been angry or he could forgive. Joseph chose to forgive. He gave them food and sent for his father and his whole family to come and live in Egypt. Joseph understood God had a plan and told his brothers why he chose to forgive. And so let's quick read about that. That's in Genesis 50. It's like 13 chapters later. This is a long story. Um, but God really gives us a picture of his forgiveness through the life of Joseph. Okay, so Genesis 50, verse 20. <clears throat> it says, as for you, you meant evil against me. Joseph is talking to his brothers here. Do you understand that? So he says, um, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Did you catch what Joseph was telling his brothers in that? That God was meaning something for good, even in this situation, right? And so um, let's read on what it says. Well, you can put that in the box, that God had a bigger purpose than this. Forgiving somebody who does something wrong to you is difficult. 
But remember that God suffered, or I'm sorry, God offered us forgiveness before we asked for it or understood that we needed it. We certainly didn't deserve to be forgiven. That's true. So let's look up and read Luke 23, 34 in our Bibles. Uh, Jesus is our example. What did he say while he hung on the cross? Luke 23, <clears throat> verse 24. Um, nope, I got the wrong verse. 34. That'll make more sense. <laughs> okay. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He knew that the people crucifying him could only see a really small picture of what was going on. We talked about this actually at church on Sunday uh, in children's ministry because it was like they had this little ton of vision they could only see, right? And they could only see the conflict here on earth. They couldn't see the big picture. And Jesus understood that, right? Because he's God. He's fully God, even when he was fully man. And he knew that they could only see a little picture of what was going on. And they thought in that situation they had to crucify Jesus. So Jesus, because he knew the big picture, he was able to say, God, forgive them. Father, forgive them. They don't understand what they're doing. So let's read what it says. True forgiveness is showing grace. It's choosing not to hold a person's sin against him or her. It's choosing to love and not punish another person even though he or she sinned. It is being kind to others even when they don't deserve it. It's not easy, but the Holy Spirit will help you become more like Christ and learn to forgive others. We almost need that big picture that Jesus had, right? That we could see that the big picture is that God loves us and he has something bigger in mind than the present conflict that we're working on. And that's something I need to remind myself of, guys, because there's things, there's conflicts that rise up and they make us, it's, it's really hard for us to look at it how God looks at it, right? But that's part of that transformation process. The more we get to know him, we, the more we get to see what his ideas are about what's going on on this earth, we have more grace, and God transforms our hearts to be more like him. Yeah? So let's talk about transformation. Let's skip over in our books. And we're now on page 220. Okay? It says, explore. When you accept Jesus, you may not feel any different. But in an instant, you are a brand new creation. In God's sight, you have become the opposite of what you once were. So we're going to look up and read our memory verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 in our Bibles. It says, in order for us to be in Jesus Christ and become a new creation, Jesus had to die on the cross and take everyone's sin upon himself. It was as if he was guilty of everyone's sin. So what is our memory verse? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. All right, so let's look up 2 Corinthians 5.21. That's only a few verses away from our memory verse, right? 2 Corinthians, oops, I just passed it. 5.21. And it says, For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin. Who is that? Jesus, right? So that in Jesus, in him, we might become the righteousness of God. That's a crazy thing to get our heads wrapped around, right? That instead of seeing a sinful person, he sees Jesus' righteousness in us. That's amazing. So let's read what those white boxes will say. Jesus told Paul that when we, are, when we trust Christ, we become the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. <laughs> let's read on. This is awesome. It's a trade. God gave Christ our sins. And he gives us Christ's goodness and sinlessness. That trade is really good for us. Really rough for Christ, right? Because he took all of the yuck and we get all of the good. In the moment that we believe Jesus Christ, we believe in him and trust that he died on the cross for our sins and rose again, we are changed forever. Let's look at some of the ways we are transformed. Okay, this is the part I'm excited about. So look up and read the verses in our Bibles. 
Fill in the blanks for what you were before accepting Christ and what you are after accepting Christ. So the first one was done for us, the Galatians 4, 7. So let me read that and then you can see what they did there. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. That's the go eat popcorn section. Right after the Corinthians, we have go eat popcorn. Galatians 4, verse 7. <clears throat> I'm going to read this to you and we'll see what they did there. 4, 7 says, so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Okay, so we have before, you see they wrote there, we were a slave. And then after, we're a son and an heir. An heir is somebody who's going to receive the benefits of being part of that family. Okay, Ephesians 2, 4 through 5. Let's look at that one. Ephesians 2, 4 through 5. It says, But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. So I think those comparison words are in verse five. Did you hear that? Uh, even when we were dead in our trespasses, that's what we were. So dead in sin, dead in trespasses. And then after he said he made us alive together with Christ. For by grace you have been saved, it says. So alive with Christ. So we before, dead in sin, after, alive in Christ. All right, Ephesians 5.8. That's nice. Right close. Scooch over to 5.8. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So before we have darkness, after we have light or children of light. Romans 5. Let's scooch over to Romans that's before the Corinthians. So we're going backwards right after the book of Acts. And we're Romans 5, verse 10. I think this is one of our memory verses from old. I think you'll recognize it. For while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Okay. So before, did you catch that in the beginning? We were enemies, right? We were enemies. And then it says we were reconciled to God. And we are reconciled. We're saved by his life. So you could say before enemies, after reconciled. Reconciled is like when that picture of the father receiving the prodigal son back with a hug. Like he runs to him. He doesn't even make him explain anything. He just runs to him and hugs him and says, my son's back. That's what that means. That reconciled word means. So you could say hug. Remember, we said a good word for reconciled means hug. So you have enemies and now you have a hug, right? Our now is a hug or our after is a hug. Reconciled. All right. And then we have Romans 8 verse 9. 8 verse 9. It says, you, however, are not in the flesh but in the spirit, if in fact the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Okay, so you could say before we're all about the flesh. After we're about the spirit, the spirit of God. Is that, do you see that comparison? That one's a little bit of a harder one because those are words we don't use every day, right? We don't compare flesh to spirit every day. But that's what God is kind of teaching us a little bit. We were uh, in the flesh, meaning we were thinking of all the things of the world, um, things that we want our own way, right? Our flesh is kind of like a hungry baby. Like, I just want it. I just want everything for myself, right? And then he's saying, but then in the spirit, in the spirit of God dwells in you. God puts something new in us that's wanting to love and wanting to forgive, wanting to have relationship with something more than just what we can consume. We want something bigger, and that's the spirit of God living in us. So before flesh, after the spirit. So let's read what they close here. It says, a lot happens when you accept Jesus. Even though you may not feel it, you become a new creation. You become the opposite of what you once were. As you grow in your relationship with God, you will continue to transform. You will still sin 
and you won't be perfect, but God will give you the grace to become more and more like the best version that he created you to be. Okay, so we're still going to struggle. I still struggle. I still wrestle with this, you guys. But God keeps teaching me more and more. And it's when he reminds me of who I am, that I'm loved, that I'm filled with his spirit, that I am forgiven by him. It helps me to do this more and more, that I can forgive others. I can be humble instead of prideful because it really is what God did for me. And he gives me this big picture of what he is doing, right? He is slowly working so that Christ can come back and we can establish eternity in heaven with him, right? That's the big picture. And so as we do the stuff on earth, right, we live day in and day out. And there's some rough things that happen. And we mess up and we make things rougher, right? That we know that we're forgiven. We know that we're loved. And we can be encouraged to love others, to forgive others, and to act in humility towards others because of what God did for us. And that's that transformation piece. Isn't that amazing? So we've talked about some really big stuff, some hard things to get our heads wrapped around, things that I'm still learning. So if you have questions, please feel free to call, okay? Or reach out to your parents and say, hey, we talked about this. What does this look like? Or maybe a grandparent or somebody that you talk about God's word with to ask them, hey, what does this mean? Or I'm wrestling with this. I need some help. And feel free to call me, call Pastor Jamie, call any of your other Awana leaders, and we'd love to chat with you more. So for now, goodbye, and I'll see you again soon. Um, next week, we're working on 4.6, okay? So only one thing to do this week, and then we'll see you next week. All right, bye, friends.